So you just bought yourself a Steam Deck. The Steam Deck is very good at many things, including playing video games. The Steam Deck though is so open that it might be overwhelming to you. The goal of this video is to be the Steam Deck's beginner's resource. This is the Steam Deck Masterclass, Volume 1 I would say. We've got three basic lessons for the new Steam Deck owner. Before you proceed with the rest of this video, if you just bought a Steam Deck then I would recommend just downloading a game from your library and then playing it. If you're a new Steam user and you don't own any games, you can try out the free Aperture Desk Job. It's a short little experience made for the Steam Deck set in the Portal universe, so give that a shot before you play anything else really. Explore your Steam Deck's basic UI before you decide to dive into any further activity. So did you have fun with your Steam Deck? What game did you just play? Let me know in the comments down below. And if you do end up liking this video, be sure to give me a like and subscribe. It really helps me get noticed by the YouTube algorithm. So what you just explored right now is game mode. As you can see here, game mode is fully featured. It's basically a consoleized system. You can download and launch games from here, you can message your friends, you can buy games from here, you can tweak some of the Steam Deck settings. It's fully featured, and it has a lot of the basic features you need to get started. So enough talk, let's get started with the lessons. The first of which is optimizing your battery life. You see that mysterious triple dot button on the bottom right corner of the console? It opens up what we call the quick access menu. The quick access menu gives you access to a number of different settings just right there. Things from Wi-Fi to Bluetooth to performance overlays to brightness. You can even access it during gameplay as well. But in this lesson, we're going to primarily focus on TDP settings. In this performance menu, Menu, you can see a number of different options, but we're going to focus on three specific sliders. What is cool is that you can set per app performance settings, so you can make multiple different profiles for each individual game. So first let's talk about the refresh rate slider. So as of SteamOS 3.5.5, this slider is now both the refresh rate and the frame rate limit. If you've got an OLED Steam Deck, this slider goes from 10 to 90 but on an LCD Steam Deck it goes from 10 to 60. This frame limit slider also changes the refresh rate as needed. So generally speaking for modern AAA titles, they won't run above 30 FPS, so if you limit to 30 FPS then it's basically like a console experience. But some games are prime candidates for what is known as 40Hz mode, so plenty of major AAA titles probably won't run at 60 FPS, but they certainly run a lot better than 30 FPS, they hover around the 40 FPS range. Limiting the refresh rate to 40 40 hertz means that the game runs surprisingly smoother, way smoother than 30 hertz. Not as smooth as 60, but it's still something. This one singular revelation changed my perspective on frame rate and refresh rate entirely. For games like visual novels and like other RPGs that aren't necessarily super frame rate dependent, you can lower the refresh rate even lower. Like visual novels, you can play that at a solid 10 FPS. Do keep in mind though that this also makes the anime cutscenes run at like 10 FPS as well for those games that have them. And for those that need it, there is an option to run games at an uncapped frame rate. This isn't really recommended though given that you're stuck to a 90Hz or 60Hz display. And it can eat up more battery. But aside from this one frame rate slider, you have two very important performance sliders. The first of which is a TDP slider. This TDP slider governs how much power goes to your processor. The maximum the processor will ever use is 15 watts, but I will say not every game needs this much power. Plenty of indie titles and smaller titles don't need this much power. And while some games are perfectly efficient and don't consume more power than what's needed, some games consume much more power than is necessary to hit a stable FPS. This setting isn't dangerous or anything so don't be afraid to tinker around with it. But essentially, you'll want to keep lowering it slowly until you start to notice a hitch in frame rate. Also in tandem with this slider is the manual GPU clock slider. Essentially, this lets you change how fast the GPU itself runs. Yes, the GPU is built into the processor itself. It's called an APU. There are a lot of graphically simpler games on Steam that don't need a faster GPU, so you can lower this as well. Like with the TDP settings, taking this a little too far can be detrimental to game performance. So don't be afraid to tinker around with these two to get the perfect setting. That said, if you don't want to go through the work of tinkering around, there are some websites out there like Steam Deck HQ which give you perfectly good settings for more popular titles. For a given game, with the correct settings, you can increase 
your battery life substantially. But some games are quite unforgiving when it comes to performance. They need the maximum GPU clock speeds. They need maximum TDP. Games like Cyberpunk 2077 comes to mind. Also, one more thing I should mention before we go. In this performance menu, there's an option called half rate shading. Never enable it. It's supposed to save battery, but in my experience, it doesn't really save battery, and at the cost of making text garbled and just making everything look worse in general, do yourself a favor and never enable it. So that about concludes it for the first lesson of this video. Next up is understanding game compatibility. So Steam Deck game compatibility is supposed to be straightforward. Games on Steam are arranged in four different categories. The first of which is Steam Deck Verified. It's the green check mark. When a game is Steam Deck Verified, it's supposed to be a great experience on Steam Deck. It's a game you're supposed to just launch and play immediately. No need to change anything if desired. In my own humble experience, generally speaking, when a game is marked as Steam Deck Verified, they generally work fine. I don't think I've had many issues where games don't work as expected. Next up is a more contentious, playable moniker. Games marked as playable, simply put, are games that play on Steam Deck, they technically run. That said, unlike verified issues, there may be a couple of different issues that may be keeping them from being perfectly Steam Deck verified. Issues that aren't really game breaking but can be annoying at times. Like for example, small text. This is a somewhat popular issue, but basically a lot of games have difficult to read small text and because of that they're marked as playable instead of verified. Another popular issue is that some games require manual use of the keyboard. For example, if a game gives you a text box that you have to type Type in, typically with your keyboard, you have to manually bring up the virtual keyboard yourself. Verified titles, however, automatically bring up the keyboard when prompted. A pretty major one is the lack of true controller support. Like let's say for example Starbound. Starbound does not have official controller support. That said, you can always define your own controllers, but for a game like Starbound, Starbound has a lot of key binds and this can be quite time consuming. There are also convenient configurations, but you do have to learn how to use that configuration, so yeah. But Starbound does run on Steam Deck, and it runs surprisingly well, even with like a million different mods. And of course, the most important and probably most contentious category, unsupported. Unsupported Steam Deck titles are games that are, well, unsupported on Steam Deck. Either games are unstable on Steam Deck, or they don't support the Steam Deck, or they don't run on the Steam Deck, or who knows, really. A popular example of these sorts of titles are, in fact, anti-cheat titles. Games that have anti-cheat built into them. Contrary to popular belief, some of the most popular anti-cheat systems work on Steam Deck. Easy Anti-Cheat and Battle Life, for example, have Steam Deck support. But the thing is, it's a per-developer basis. Linux support is an option developers have to select. And for some, they choose not to. And of course, Valve can't force them to support the Steam Deck, a popular game being Destiny 2. I know for a fact that the Steam Deck is capable of running Destiny 2, it's just that Bungie will not enable Destiny 2 support on the Steam Deck for whatever reason. With Destiny 2 on the decline, you would think that Bungie would be like, oh, let's let Linux and Steam Deck gamers play. And the worst part about it is they won't. Show of hands, where are all of the Linux cheaters? Yeah, that's what I thought, no one switches the Linux to cheat on video games. Another Another popular category are games that have cutscenes that don't work on Steam Deck for some reason. Some games use Microsoft codecs for videos, and these videos don't play on Steam Deck because, legally speaking, Valve doesn't want to license these codecs from Microsoft. It shows one of those TV testing patterns, you know, the one with all the colors and stuff. Audio may still play, but the video will not. Eventually those games do have cutscenes working properly on Steam Deck. But until then, those games do get marked as unsupported because if I want to play a game and the cutscenes don't work, I'm going to stop playing the game almost immediately. But of course, the most confusing addition to the unsupported categories are games that seem to work fine out of the box. I've talked about this in multiple videos already, but essentially some games that are marked as unsupported work out of the box. Sometimes they have outdated rankings that no longer reflect the current status of the game. When tested, those games may have not worked, but then, you know, time has passed, Proton has gotten some updates, and now the game works as expected. And Valve hasn't gone around to retesting those games. I do think they should retest those games, but, you know, whatever, I guess. 
There is a fourth category known as unknown titles, games that Valve has yet to test. And most games will fall under this category, I mean, do you know how many games get released in a day on Steam? Given there's a specific lack of testing when it comes to these games, your mileage may vary. Some will run perfectly, some should be Steam Deck verified, and some won't work at all. That said, many games do get verification ratings before they get released, and that's a great sign. So generally speaking, your best bet are Steam Deck verified and Steam Deck playable titles. But sometimes they may not work as expected, and sometimes unsupported games work better than expected. There is a resource you can consult called ProtonDB. ProtonDB is a website where people submit their own reports of games running on Linux, or in this case, the Steam Deck. There's a lot of user reports, and for games that work as expected, you'll probably see things like work out of the box. But for games that can work on Steam Deck but don't work on Steam Deck out of the box, some users do provide workarounds and things that help you actually run said game. And of course, if a game doesn't work properly, they'll most likely tell you why the game doesn't work properly. So it's a good resource. And the final lesson today are Steam sales. Steam sales are, in my opinion, Valve's most coveted feature. It's a gateway into the wonderful world of PC games. There are so many PC games out there and more often than not, they end up being cheaper on Steam than they are on multiple different consoles. This is the best time to procure games on Steam. Unless you're buying brand new games day one, you should wait till Steam sales come around so that you can buy them on sale for a discount. I will say this, you should temper your expectations. Modern AAA titles probably won't show up for sale immediately. You'll probably have to wait for... I don't know, half a year or something like that? No promises though. Generally speaking, Valve has four seasonal sales. Spring, summer, fall, and winter sale. Sometimes these sales also have events as well that give you things like trading cards and stickers and whatnot. We're not going to focus on those because that's not the point of this lesson. Games go on sale and depending on the developers, they can go for really cheap. This is also where wishlisting comes in handy. If you wishlist titles, you will get notifications and emails saying that a game that's on your wishlist has gone on sale for X amount of percent. But also coinciding with Steam sales are in fact sales for Steam keys on other websites outside of Steam. Websites like Humble Bundle or Fnatic for one. But there's a ton of these websites, and if you want to look for the best deal on a specific game, you can go on IsThereAnyDeal.com. IsThereAnyDeal.com gives you a list of websites that sell Steam versions of said game, and they tell you which of these websites has the cheaper price. There are times when Steam keys on a specific website are being sold for cheaper than they are on Steam itself. But there's an even easier solution. There's an extension known as Augmented Steam. Augmented Steam tells you a lot of details in regards to games, and it also gives you information on prices, such as historical low, which tells you how low a game has ever been and when that happened. And it also tells you the current lowest price of a game that you can buy outside of Steam. So you can save yourself a ton of money. Another thing to keep your eye out for are bundles. Bundles are a package deal. You buy the bundle and then it gives you a couple of keys for a couple of different games. Generally speaking, they're themed after something, such as a action game bundle or something, right? This is on a per bundle basis, but at times, buying bundles can be cheaper than buying one of the games in the bundle by itself. The only real caveat is that sometimes bundles have games you may not be interested in, bundled in with games that you're very interested in. But given you get those keys anyways, you can either add it to your account to have the game at all, or give it to a friend or something like that. So I think that about covers it for the most essential Steam Deck stuff. Stuff to really start your Steam Deck journey. I plan on making this a full video series, and I hope that you guys stick around in case I do. These sort of tutorial videos do take up a lot of time, and of course it takes quite a bit of effort to make a good tutorial video to make people understand. I want to make this video series the definitive Steam Deck Bible, and I hope that you guys will help me on that front. If you like this video, please press the like button and check out our other videos. And if you like those other videos as well, be sure to press the subscribe button and share the good gospel of high tech low life with your friends. Furthermore, we have a community discord for enlightened individuals such as you. And if you wish to further support high tech low life, be sure to check out our Patreon page. Links in the description.